Ladies and gentlemen, the young man on the far, my far right, your left, is a guy that was with Elvis for about 10 years. He used to play touch football with Elvis. Uh, Elvis liked him. Uh, he was very affectionate. He went on the road with Elvis in the early days. Uh, he started out as a bodyguard, then he moved up. Uh, also, I think he, he was a, a stand-in in about three or four of Elvis's motion pictures. And then he moved up to a personal aide and confidant uh, with Elvis. And of course, you all know the famous story. He was a guy that went to the White House with Elvis. He and Sonny went up to the White House to see President Nixon. He's got a tremendous amount of stories. He was one of Elvis's very, very best friends of Paul Bear at Elvis's funeral. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jerry Schilling. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, George. Uh, nice, nice crowd. Tell me why you were late, Jerry. Why were you late? Yeah, two blocks away. I was reading the LA Times. Reading the LA Times. Also, if you don't know, Jerry Schilling also for 10 years managed the Beach Boys, managed Jerry Lee Lewis, managed Peter Newton of Herman's Hermes, and he also was Lisa Marie Presley's very first manager. And for about many years, worked for the Presley Estate and Creative Department. Well, thank you. It's a, it's a real honor to be here, uh, especially with this group of people. Uh, if it wasn't for Richard Davis asking me to go to breakfast with him after a movie, uh, I don't know if Elvis would have found me not that night. I may never have gone to California the next day. And uh, I'm so glad that Mary Ann's here. She's had a rough year. And, she looks as great as ever. Uh, it is ex yeah, let's hear it for her. Uh, it is an extreme honor for me to be up here on, on the same stage with DJ and Scotty. They know what to do on stage, I don't. And um, uh, I got to go back to New York, thanks to Scotty, when he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, I love these guys. And another one I really do is George Klein. You know, George... <laughs> Thank you. George and I grew up across the street from each other on, on Leith Street, and uh, if there has been one guy who has been a great, true friend to Elvis Presley and to the fans, it's George Klein. Thank you very much, George. Thank you. You know, the way I feel about it, you gotta, you gotta face yourself and uh, he's ever uttered a negative comment about Elvis, folks. Okay, we, the reason we're here is questions and answers. We have a gentleman in the audience with a microphone. He'll jump around. If you raise your hand, we'll try to recognize you and we'll get the show on the road. Give me an ease, guy. All right. <laughs> Richard, you gotta, over there, yes, ma'am, what's your question? Richard, she wants you to tell us about the panel pickup, about, about the black panel truck, about Elvis said, go get the truck. Are you talking about the day Elvis lost his truck? Elvis, one day when we, when we was back here from filming a movie in Hollywood, um, Elvis saw this ranch uh, in Horn Lake called well, it was a beautiful ranch. It had a big, beautiful lake on it and a white bridge across it and a big, big, huge white cross. And Elvis fell in love with it, so he decided he wanted to buy this ranch. And he bought it, and he named it the Circle G Ranch. And uh, when he bought the ranch, he stocked it with uh, black Angus cattle, and uh, he decided, well, you know, you guys, you need something to drive back and forth with instead of using your own cars, but we wasn't 15 minutes from Graceland. But he said, no, you need something else to drive. So he goes out and he buys all of us brand new Chevrolet El Camino trucks and Ranchero, four Rancheros. And he buys his own house trailers to put on the back of the, the lake so he could stay out there when he was there. Well, one day, and he had just bought these cars. So I, I had a head mine, but probably one day. I had probably about 50 miles on it. And we're standing outside talking about Elvis and myself and Joe Esposito and Billy Smith and Alan Fortis. We're all standing outside talking, and as we're talking, this old black panel truck drives up, and it's the trash man, he's picking up the trash. So as Elvis is talking to us, he's looking and watching this trash man pick up this trash. And of course, the old truck would hardly make it, his old truck. So Elvis calls him over and says, hey, come here, man. Never get another. Never get another. It's in the mail. 
It's in the mail. It's in the mail. All right. Next question. We have a question. Okay. Why don't we get? Why don't we jump right into this? Uh, you, you got a question? Yeah, over there. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, my name is Billy Nash, and this is Ron Brown. We're a couple of musicians from London, um, from England, and we're doing a, a project on Elvis's Gospel Roots, a musical. And my question is to anybody on the panel, but more in particular to Scotty, um, because he was with Elvis from more or less from day one. Scotty, I'd like to know, as part of this research, when, when most of the world turned over, especially the church folk, and were really calling Elvis's act vulgar and, you know, obscene, how did that really affect him on a day-to-day -day basis as he was traveling with you in the Mid-South and obviously with his Bible Belt? Uh, did he share anything with you as with regards to how that affected him? It had to be shared because he was working with the Reckiest Trio. <laughs> Uh, it was a gradual thing, um, probably the, the big uh, publicity started happening after we did the first TV shows. But uh, we just went on, did, it, did our thing, we knew what we were doing, and uh, didn't let it bother us. Okay, okay. the famous story, uh, is that to answer your question? Is that what you're looking for? Okay. 